my goodness, welcome to another video of your daily dose of NCLEX. Listen, today we have a treat. I mean, it's not a treat, it's another topic. It's breast cancer. But you know, a lot of people ask me questions, not a lot of people, but a lot of my students ask me questions about breast cancer, and then I said, you know what, let me make this video. All right, now the confusion is, you know, what is breast cancer, patients with different types of breast cancer, priorities, um, maybe nursing care, uh, risk factors, treatment, blah, blah. Breast examination, yes, confusing, all right? So in one video, I'm gonna talk about all that, which is everything you need to know about the NCLEX, all right? Now, let's flip, of course, you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip the board, I'm gonna show you a question, we'll go through the question, and then I'm gonna teach you the nursing content, all right? But before we go, listen, I've got this ebook. I want to give you this ebook for free. So there's a link in the description box. You just click on it and get this free ebook. It's the real NCLEX world versus NCLEX textbooks. And a lot of people see this blue book and they tell me, hey Mo, oops, they say, hey Mo, what is this blue book? And I'm like, you know when my students go to the test center, after they get out of the test center, they text me the topics that they got on the real test. So what I do over the past 12 months, me and my team have been taking screenshots of those text messages and I will put them in one ebook where you can download it and look at the topics and see what is currently being discussed on the NCLEX, which is gonna be a huge help, all right? Now, let's flip the board and let's discuss this question. I'm gonna get my red marker and make sure we're still in frame. All right, so I'm gonna read the question, and of course, if you're one of my students, or you are going to be one of my students in the future, which I call my students Alpha Slicer, because my name is Mo, on the internet, I'm known as Alpha Slicer. All right, ADHD, I digress. All right, so we read the question three times. The first time, it's gonna be general reading, the second time, we're gonna look for keywords, and the third time, we're gonna rephrase the question in our own words to make sure that we understand what the examiner wants from us, so that there's no confusion, all right? Okay, so the nurse is assigned to take care of four patients. After reviewing their history, which is you know medical history or surgical history, which patient is identified as being most at risk for developing breast cancer? All right, so now, before I read the options, which you know I already said, you don't read the options before you read the question three times. Now, the second time I'm reading the questions, I'm going to look for keywords, all right? So the nurse is assigned to take care of four patients, no keywords there. After reviewing their history, which patient is identified as being the most at risk for developing breast cancer, all right? So breast cancer is the word, is the key, is a keyword and risk, all right? So most at risk for developing breast cancer. Those are my keywords. Right now, if I want to rephrase the question in my own words, all right? This is why I told you, if you watch previous you know, daily dose of NCLEX videos, or, you know, you see me on the internet, I am big on visualizing. So you close your eyes and you visualize that setting, all right? Now, you're gonna tell me, hey Mo, you're taking a lot of time to solve one question. I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? You didn't watch my video where I talked about how the NCLEX is graded. Time is not your enemy. So anytime, like when you go to the test center and you're actually going through the test, in the top corner, there's the time. You can take it out so that you don't see it because I don't want you to focus on time. It's gonna raise your test anxiety, all right? Time is not important, only wrong answers are important. Now, I'm gonna go get into a visualization state and I'm gonna visualize that setting. So I came into you know the unit, they assigned me to four patients and I've got four patients, right? So mostly I'm in an oncology unit, right? So I've got four patients and I want to identify which of those patients, after I went through their history, is the highest risk for breast cancer, all right? Now that I understood the question, I can go ahead and read the options because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at the most risk for breast cancer. All right, option number one, 29 year old Nellie Porus patient, right? So Nellie Porus, a lot of patients, like, another person is someone who has never had kids before, all right? So 29 year old, 29 year old another person patient, is that a risk, right, for breast cancer? So basically that's a normal human being. That's like it, pretty much a normal human being. Are they a risk for cancer? That, that's, that's not a risk for cancer, right? Now, the 29 year old, I'm gonna tell you in a bit what does that mean, but that patient is not a risk for breast cancer. 
All right, option number two, 45 year old patient with a familial history, all right? So maybe their grandma, their sister, their mother, someone had breast cancer in the family, all right? So familial history. Definitely this is a risk for breast cancer, right? If you had a familial history of breast cancer, you're definitely at a high risk for breast cancer. Now, I'm gonna keep this option, but I'm gonna look through the other options. Maybe there's a, because we're looking at the most, right? The most, maybe there's a, something with a higher risk, all right? So option number three, 58 year old patient with a history of breast cancer. Oh my God, with a history of breast cancer. So this patient, number one, she's 58 years old and she had cancer before at a later age, right? So he, she, had a, she had cancer before, definitely, she is higher risk than familial history because she, the, the risk for relapse is higher. Usually uh, within five years, it's the highest risk for relapse. After five years, you know, there, there's a less chance, but they're still at a higher risk from a patient who just had familiar history, all right? Now, when it comes to uh, j just a little bit of, you know, uh, information, right, content. Also patients who had cancer during their childhood, right? Leukemia, lymphoma, um, Hodgkin lymphoma, whatever the case might be, right? If they had cancer during their childhood and they were exposed to chemotherapy, radiation therapy, or whatever the case might be, then those patients are also at high risk for getting breast cancer or any other type of cancer in the future, right? Now, option number four, so, so for now, I'm gonna cancel option number two because this, is, is, this one is more powerful. Option number three is more powerful. Now, option number four, 60, years old, 60 year old patient who has been menopause for 13 years, all right? So 60 year old menopause for 13 years is not a higher risk than a patient who, who had cancer before, right? So usually patients who have cancer are the highest incidence of breast cancer I'm not sure, do you see it down here? All right, let me write right here. So patients who had an incidence of breast cancer or, or the highest incidence of breast cancer are from the age of 40 to 50. All right, then you skip a little period and then above 65, right? So above 65 is like this, right? Uh, or is it, yeah, above 65. So 50, uh, 40, 50 years old and then above 65, all right? So that's how you break a question when it comes to you know, breast cancer. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about breast cancer, all right? Listen, early detection is the best treatment, all right? Early detection of breast cancer is the best treatment. That's why we do mammograms, all right? So mammography, oh, why I'm looking at the board. We do mammography um, starting anywhere, anywhere from the age of 35 to 40, you have to get your first one, all right? You're a female, age 35 to 40, you have to get your first mammogram, all right? And then after the age of 40, as we said, highest incidence between 40 and 50, after the age of 40, you've got to do a mammography or a mammogram every year on a yearly basis, all right? Now, it's very important, we're gonna talk about breast examination, you do it at least once a month, at least once a month, all right? And I'm gonna you know, walk you through how you do breast examination, right? So. Um, the best cure is early detection. Now, when you find dimples um, or tumors that are less than 44 centimeters, so dimples less than four centimeters are curable, right? Surgery, maybe a little bit of chemotherapy. Most of the time it's oral chemotherapy and boom, you're healthy. And then you monitor for five year survival so that there's no relapse, all right? Now tumors that are larger than four centimeters are more aggressive and require more treatment, maybe more chemotherapy, radiation therapy, hormonal therapy or surgery, all right? Now, one more thing that I wanna like um, circle back to mammography, right? You tell your patients when they go for a mammography, don't put deodorant or you know powders and stuff like that, whatever they put, because they mimic the calcium plaques on the radiogram, and that is like a false positive, all right? Now, a definitive diagnosis for breast cancer is through a biopsy and sending that biopsy to pathology, all right? Now, the most common sites for metastasis are, of course, lungs, liver, brain, spine, and lymph nodes, all right? Now, risk factors, I already talked about risk factors when we were solving the question, but risk factors are patients with familiar history, patients who have a past history with cancer, patients who drink daily alcohol intake, you hear me, Emily, daily alcohol intake, and then you've got patients with who had uterine cancer in the past, like any type of cancer, childhood cancer, 
Anytime you are exposed to radiation therapy or chemotherapy in your childhood, yes, you are at risk for any type of cancer or breast cancer, but if you had uterine cancer in, in the past, then yes, you are at a high risk for um, breast cancer. Now, when it comes to treatment, I think I discussed treatment earlier when we were discussing, you know, whatever, you know, I have ADD, I'll jump all over the place, but treatment is surgery or mastectomy. We got chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and hormonal therapy. Now, let me talk a little bit about the signs and symptoms of breast cancer. When would you suspect breast cancer? Now, if you have a lump, and that lump is not freely movable, all right? It should, raises, it should raise concerns. Now, if that lump is not freely movable when you touch it, and at the same time, it's not painful, it should raise concerns, all right? Now, if there's dimpling in the skin, like a dimple, dimpling in the skin, that should raise concern. Any change in skin color or skin tone, skin texture, like an orange-like texture, all right? That should raise concern. Also, a retracted nipple or discharge from the nipple, that should also raise its concern. Now, when it comes to breast examination, all right, this is how you examine. Usually, once a month, under the shower, all right? So you raise your hand and you feel your breast, usually in a circular motion, starting from the nipple and then around the nipple, and you're just checking for lumps, all right? Don't go crazy. If you have a lump, you're gonna feel it. So raise your arm and start checking for lumps all the way, circle, circle, and then you do the other side, all right? Then after you finish the shower and then you dry yourself, you stand in front of the mirror. You stand like that and you look at your breasts. They should be symmetrical. They shouldn't be like, you know, okay, so I'm not saying it's symmetrical. If, if your baseline is asymmetrical, you know how you look, right? So when you stand in front of a mirror, if it looks the same from your baseline, that's totally fine. If it's not, then, that should raise concern and then maybe you should do more examination, right? Now, when you look at yourself, when you're standing like that, the other thing you need to look at yourself, you raise your hand and you look at your breasts and, and look for asymmetry, asymmetry or a shift from, your, from the shape of the baseline of your breasts, all right? Now, at the same time, we said we did the examination under the shower. Also, lay down supine, flat on your back, and you also raise your hand and check your breast this side and that side. Sometimes they like to sit lat lateral, like on their side, and check the breast on this side and do the same circle of motion, starting from the inner breast around the nipples and then all the way out. And then you lay down on the other side, lateral, and then you check that other breast. So you can do that if you want to go crazy with self-examination. Again, you're doing it once a month, so why not, all right? Now, the last thing you want to check is the nipple. Press the nipple and check if there are any discharges from the nipple, all right? So that is, in short, breast examination. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is mastectomy. I'm not going to go into details. Maybe that, that is for another video, mastectomy, the surgery, types of surgeries, and the post-op care, but let me tell you a little bit about post-op care because if your patient went to surgery, a family member or whoever the case might be, you want to tell them what are the exercises that they need to do after surgery, all right? So combing their hair, they don't really have to comb their hair, right? But that motion of the affected arm will decrease any lymph adenopathy in their arm, all right? It will not swell, it will it will maintain and, not maintain, but it will decrease that lymph, lymphedema that happens in the arm, right? So brushing their hair, do that motion at least like 10 times for one minute during the day. So for one minute, 10 times separated during the day, that motion, all right? What else? They can do uh, wall climbing. So this motion of like, Climbing a wall like Spider-Man, all right? So this motion will also help in the lymphedema, all right? And then the third thing is rope pulling or whatever you call it, that rope, like they are pulling a rope, right? So they do that and that will decrease the risk for lymphedema because lymphedema sucks if it happens, all right? So they can do this motion with rope pulling or they can do this motion with rope pulling, all right? So those are the exercises that you need to tell your patients about. Now, that's the end of the video. If you want this book, all you have to do is click the link in the description box and guess what? I'm gonna offer you this book too. This is called the 300 Spartan Medication e-booklet. 
Remember when I told you when our students go to the test center, they text me the topics that they got on their test? Guess what? They also text me the drugs that they got on their test. Medication calculation questions. So, so what we did is me and my team member, Professor Anthony Burke, we sat down over the past 12 months, we've been collecting those drugs, 300 of them. Guess why we called it 300 Spartan. 300 of them and we did the research and we put all of it in a in an ebook with you know uh, families categories but every drug has indication side effects and patient teaching and that's all you need to know i want to give you this as well i want to offer it to you so click on the link in the description box love your face share this video with your friends share it on your facebook page share it on instagram tag me at alpha slice you can also check my instagram uh, my other instagram and click skewbank i can't wait for tomorrow's daily dose of Anklex Love Your Face. Hi, my name is Mike and Mess, and I'm so excited to say that I passed the Anklex. I use Smoke program. I invested in um, the virtual program for a lifetime. Um, so right now I'm gonna um, I used a quick result. So within two days, you can check, and then it did say I pass. So what I love about most virtual program is that you could take notes. So I like to take happy notes. You can see here, um, I took notes, like all types of notes. Um, and I think for me, that kind of helped me um, to get the materials in more into my head. So I just, again, so we took the virtual, you can pause it, and then you can go over the notes, and then you can study it that way. The reason why I picked Mo is because he has a similar background. I'm also an immigrant here to America. English is my third language. And I wanted a teacher that could understand that aspects of things. And I loved his passion, his drive for what he does. And that's how I am as well. Um, the most important thing, so I got, so when I got the program, I used it um, three weeks before I took the NCLEX. Um, I passed in class on 145 questions and I use exactly what he teaches you, how to break that down each question. Normally I'm a fast tech test taker. It took me four hours um, to complete it. I took my time. And again, he says, um, time is not your enemy. The wrong answer is. Um, I had so much confidence going in, even though I did not finish the whole program. I finished about halfway through. But um, what is very vital is definitely doing... Um, the day before and the day off um, and clicks uh, rit rituals. I mean, that helps so much to so self-reflect, gratitude um, for me. Um, my test center was further away, probably like 45 minutes away. So I decided to stay at a hotel the night before. And that was actually literally three minutes away from, from the test. So I didn't have to worry about traffic and not making it. Um, but I was so calm and collected. Probably the calmest I've ever been taken in exam ever and that's because I followed to the T exactly what he tells you to do even get the snack took the break after two hour break and that was at question 66 but I love this program again I invest in a lifetime because now I'm uh, you know an LPN and I already signed up for the LPN BSN bridge program which I start next week and that's how much confidence I had in this program that I was going to pass in flex that I signed up for schools for the next level. And I'm gonna keep going to my nurse practitioner. And again, this is the best program to invest in. You would not be sorry. And you, and I love his, um, his passion and his encouragement because it can be lonely out there, um, but it is so worth it. So thank you so much, Bo.